In this video, we'll use Unity and Bolt Visual Scripting to add the ability to drop single items in the world and our slots in the inventory. This will include being able to add single items to existing stacks if they're the same, and swap them if they aren't. Let's begin! Shall we play a game? This is actually part 7 of my complete inventory series, and in order to complete this tutorial, you need to have first completed the previous tutorials in order. If this is the first video in the series that you're seeing, simply click the card in the top right to return to the start. If you're the type of person who prefers a written tutorial to a video format, I've posted a link on my Patreon page that will give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to complete each of these steps, which is free for everyone to use. If you enjoyed these tutorials and would like to help support my channel, be sure to choose your level of support on my Patreon page while you're there. As I stated in the showcase video, if you want the system but don't really care about building it, as my way of saying thank you to my top supporters, I've made the project files downloadable. Not only is my complete inventory system included to these supporters, but my complete 2D player controller as well, which by the way, includes a simple enemy AI. With that out of the way, let's get started with this build. For this section of the build, we're actually going to have to set up um, some new flow macros as well as make some changes to some existing ones. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start with our return item flow macro. I place this under my macros folder under object manager. So just right click, create a new bolt flow macro, name it uh, return item. And uh, this is what this, uh, this super unit is actually going to look like. And I'll try to explain that. You can pause your screen and build that. I'm just going to keep talking and explain this build uh, as you're doing that. Um, so uh, we need to first differentiate between a right click and a left click. So our left click will be for the next tutorial. Uh, right click is just a single unit in the world. So when we pick up an object and we drag it out of the inventory, this is going to make sure that we're not clicking on our inventory because we want something very different to happen whenever we're clicking on a slot. But when we click in the world, so we're checking to make sure that is pointer game object over the uh, uh, UI and it's not. So then we're going to instantiate an object. Uh, when an object is picked up, we don't want anything to happen if we're not holding anything, but say an item is in our hand, we want to instantiate it into the world when we're not clicking on the inventory panel. Um, and so the way we do that is we uh, use a game object instantiate here. We're going to get the list item for um, the pick slot list. So we want to get the count of that and subtract one from it because lists start with zero. We want to get the first item on the list. And this is, uh, by the way, uh, an easy way to get around uh, not subtracting the last item in a list. That's just a way, a little, uh, a little trick that I found that actually works uh, so that you don't have to run a whole other set of units. Basically what we're doing is we're getting that game object, we're instantiating that in the world, uh, the rotation is going to be 0, 0, 0 because we want it to just be upright. But um, how we actually instantiate that on our mouse click is we use this uh, screen to world point unit here. What this is doing is it's getting the location that we clicked on our camera and it's getting the, it's setting the mouse position for that. Um, and again, we just need the X and Y. The Z, the Z is not used. We're setting the Z to a zero because the camera sets at a negative 10. So we're gonna set that game object wherever we click with our mouse as long as it's not over the inventory UI system. Then we're gonna remove that list item and then we're gonna come out here and we're gonna check the amount of the pick slot list. If it's equal to zero, we send out a true. If it's not, we send out a false. And now we should be ready to make a change to our object manager flow macro. So going into that, we're going to drop that return item super unit right here. We're going to run a left mouse input into the left and a right mouse input into the right. For the true statement, meaning that there are no objects left in the list, we're going to set the object picked variable to false. This is on our uh, object manager game object. And then for false, we're going to run it past this unit right here. And we're just going to come right into count items and pick one. Now, when you go ahead and test this, you should see that when you pick up an item in the inventory UI, you should be able to right click and drop those back into your world. Dropping items in our inventory UI is gonna be a little bit more complicated and tricky because whenever you click on an empty slot, you're actually clicking on the item slot, but whenever you click on an item itself, you're actually clicking on the item. So it's the difference between this game object and say this one. So uh, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna set up a, a new flow macro, um, place it under your macros, uh, item slot folder and it's going to be called drop single and this is what that flow macro is actually going to look like um, so I'm going to pause the screen there if you'd like to uh, pause your screen and 
build that, I will talk about it as you do it. So going into uh, this flow macro, I will show you exactly what this does. As we get an input variable, it's going to see if an object is actually in our hand. And if it is, what it's going to do is it's going to count the number of items in our hand. We're, we're seeing if it is less than two. So one, essentially. So we're checking that. And if it is less than two, then what we're going to do is we're going to add the list item and then we're going to clear the list because remember we can't take the last item or we're gonna get an error. If it is not true, then we're going to trigger the add or the item add on the item slot. Um, we're gonna take that item and then we're just gonna simply remove one. So this is gonna do that one at a time. Then uh, as we come out of the clear, we're going to set the object pick variable on our object manager game object to uh, false so that when we do an update, the OM update, custom event that we have right here um, as we have that on our object manager it should update the list for us and it's going to just simply um, do the update for a remove item since there are still items in the list clicking on our item slot game object any one of them you should open up the item slot flow macro and what we're going to do is we're going to add that drop single super unit right here um, so we already had this left click going to item to empty. We're going to use the right click flow on that unit to go to drop single. Go ahead and set up a new custom event called drop single. And the reason why we're doing that is because we're doing most of the legwork right here in this flow macro where we're adding and adding and subtracting units. Uh, but since we have to click on the game object itself whenever there's an item in the slot, we're going to reference this drop single custom event. So just go ahead and add that and run the flow into the drop single input. Next, we need to take care of what actually is supposed to happen whenever we click on an item itself. So going under our macros folder, under our inventory item folder, we're going to uh, right click, create a new flow macro and call it add to stack. And this is what that flow macro needs to actually look like. Um, I will zoom in and look at each one of these units individually. But uh, if you can see that, go ahead and build that on your screen. So let me start with this first one right here. We're just checking to see if an ob object is in our hand, if the object pick variable is true. If it is true, then we're going to come and check and see if the item is capped. Now you may be wondering, why are we using the exact same thing twice here? And the reason why is because if we don't do this a second time, we will actually go past our cap limit whenever we click right click on an item. So what we need to do is we need to check and see if the item is capped. Um, if it is capped, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if the item is the same. If it's not the same, then we're gonna go out here to this custom event item swap, which I'll show you where to set that up exactly in our code. Um, but this would be, for example, if I pick up a piece of meat and I try to right click on a potion, then it will drop the meat and pick up the potion. So that's what this unit is actually taking care of. The uh, object is same here, uh, so the item is not capped. Well, is it the same? If it is the same and it's not capped, we're gonna drop a single item. If it's not capped and it's not the same, then it's gonna go out here to swap the items. Where you're actually gonna place that add to stack super unit is right here under your item game objects flow macro. Just run the right click out and add it to stack. Now there is one more change that you need to make. If you remember that custom event that we triggered called item swap, you're going to need to go ahead and place that right here in your relocate item uh, flow macro. It's just going to come out and it's going to trigger the item swap. Okay, you should now see that when you pick up your items, you are not only able to throw them into the world by right clicking, but you're also able to add those items to existing items if they're the same until they cap. They won't do anything else after you cap and you should be able to switch those items on a right click if they're not the same. What if though you'd like the ability to throw whole stacks into your world and be able to pick them up? Well, that's what we're going to cover in the next tutorial. I hope this video was helpful for you and that you can now throw out your unwanted items. I'm looking forward to the next tutorial, but for now, just let me say thanks for joining me. My name is Megahertz, and I'm out.